Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Born in the City's Big Quiz number six. If there's anybody in chat that can uh, give me a check on the sound, that would be great. I'm using a different mic tonight, so I just want to make sure everybody can hear what I'm saying. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining me tonight for the Borden City Big Quiz. Um, 
We'll be starting in a couple of minutes. I'd just like to say the quiz is for free and it's for fun. But if you can find um, a small donation or a large donation to send to the cafe, that would be great. So I'll give everybody a couple more minutes just to get your pen and paper, get a drink, and then we'll carry on. Okay, let's get on with the quiz. Let's have a look at the rounds. Tonight there will be eight rounds. Uh, round one will be general knowledge. Round two will be animal groups. Round three is a picture round and it is bridges. Um, and then we'll have a break, five minutes. Um, and then round four is planet nerd. Round five is is the food round round six is guess the logo which again is a picture round and we'll have another break and round seven is another general knowledge round but these are questions that have been on mastermind and round eight is the missing vowels round so uh looks like we have quite a few people online so let's get on with this So, round one, the general knowledge round. Question one. Divinely uninspired to a hellish extent is the debut album of which Scottish singer-songwriter? Divinely uninspired to a hellish extent is the debut al album of which Scottish singer-songwriter? Question one. Question two. Which basketball star died in a helicopter crash? I believe it was in January of this year. Which basketball star died in a helicopter crash? Question three. What did the Romans call Scotland? No rude answers, please. What did the Romans call Scotland? And question four. In tenpin bowling... What is the term given for three consecutive strikes? So question one, divinely uninspired to a hellish extent is the debut album of which Scottish singer-songwriter? Question two, which basketball star died in a helicopter crash in January? Question three, what did the Romans call Scotland? And question four, in tenpin bowling, what is the term given for three consecutive strikes? Okay, so we will move on to the next set of questions. Question five. What is the most famous Mexican beer? Question five. What is the most famous Mexican beer? Question six. Taylor Swift grew up on what type of farm? Taylor Swift grew up on what type of farm? Question six. Question seven. In what Netflix series does actress Gillian Anderson play a sex therapist? Question seven. In what Netflix series does actress Gillian Anderson play play a sex therapist and question eight true or false can an emu fly 
or an emu can fly? Question mark. Can an emu fly? True or false? Okay, anybody need any more time? I'll give you 30 seconds and then we will go through the answers. Unless I get somebody in chat that says they need me to repeat a question. This music is cool. Okay, so we will go to the answers. Divinely Uninspired to a Hellish Extent is the debut album of which Scottish singer-songwriter? That is Lewis Capaldi. To which basketball star died in a helicopter crash in January? That was Kobe Bryant. Question three, what did the Romans call Scotland? They called it Caledonia. And question four, in 10 pin bowling, what is the term given for three consecutive strikes? It's called a turkey. Okay, so question Five. What is the most famous Mexican beer? It is Corona. Of course it's Corona. Question six. Taylor Swift grew up on what type of farm? She grew up on a Christmas tree farm. Question seven. In what Netflix series does actress Gillian Anderson play a sex therapist? It is sex education. And can an emu fly? True or false? Yes. An emu can fly. Okay, so chuck your scores up in chat. Let's see how well you did or how badly you did. Adrian Melly almost got negative scores. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, there's plenty more rounds to go, Adrian. I'm not sure you can get a question so wrong that you I'll give you negative points. Well done, Gracie's World. Four out of eight. Not a bad try. Not a bad try. Okay, so it's a little bit quiet in chat tonight, so let's move on to round two. Simon Walton, eight, prove it. <laughs> Stephen thinks emus cannot fly, oh dear. We've got the emu one wrong. Sheila and Andy, five, congratulations. And emus can't fly. Well, that's not what the internet says, so what the internet says goes. I've always said, if you have a problem with any of the answers, send an email to the internet. Okay, round two, animal groups. So, the collective word for a group of animals. Well done, Paul. Five. So, question one. Cobras. Is it a carpet of cobras, a coil of cobras, or a quiver of cobras? So, A carpet, B coil, C quiver. Gorillas. Is it A band, B group, or C show? So 
A band of gorillas? A group of gorillas? A show of gorillas? A, B, or C. Porcupines. Question three. Porcupines. Is it a spike? A pop? Or a prickle? So A, spike. B, pop. C, prickle. <laughs> Emos can't fly. Very good. Very good. Uh, question four. Stingrays. Is it a chill of stingrays, a fever of stingrays, or a shiver of stingrays? Okay, on to question five. Five. Deer. Is it a packet of deer? B. A parcel of deer? Or C. A post of deer? I know you can get a herd of deer, but that's not one of the answers you've got in front of you. So pick one of the answers in the list. Hippo. Is it a thunder of hippo? A boom of hippo? Or a clap of hippo? So A. Thunder. B. Boom. C. Clap. Lemurs. Is it a, a. A conspiracy of lemurs? B. A coup of lemurs? C. A rebellion of lemurs? And question eight, narwhals. Is it A, a blessing of narwhals, B, an absolution of narwhals, or C, a grace of narwhals? So, question eight, narwhals. A, a blessing, B, an absolution, C, a grace. Okay. Anybody need any extra time having a conflict within your teams about whether it's a packet of parcel or a post of deer? If not, we will move on to the answers. Okay, let's move on. So, answers. Question one, cobras. It is a quiver of cobras. Question answer is C, a quiver of cobras. Question two, gorillas. It is a band of gorillas. Answer A, a band of gorillas. Question three, porcupines. It's a prickle of porcupines. That's answer C, a prickle of porcupines. And number four, stingrays, is B, a fever, a fever of stingrays. So one is C, two is A, three is C, and four is B. So we'll move on to question five, deer. And it is a parcel. So B, parcel, a parcel of deer. Hippopotamus? Question six, is a thunder of hippopotamus? A, thunder, a thunder of hippopotamus. Question seven, lemurs, is a conspiracy. A conspiracy, a conspiracy, a conspiracy of lemurs. And narwhals is a blessing, a blessing of narwhals. So the answer is A. So five is B, six is A, seven is A, and eight is A. 
So throw your answers into the chat. How many did you get? Eight out of eight. Come on, we gotta have some eight out of eights for this one. Thirty-three percent chance of getting thirty-three percent of them right. Is that hundred percent chance of getting thirty-three percent right? Miss Queen got four. Simon got six. Gracie's world got two. Oh dear. Oh dear. Two out of eight. Gina and Andy, well done. Six is a good score. Paul, well done. Half points is good. Any more for any more. So we will move on to round three. Adrian, we got three, but now have a full team. Oh, well, we could only go up from here then. So we have the pitcher round, or the first pitchers round. We have 10 pitchers of bridges. All you've got to do is match the picture to the name. Um, I'm going to give you five minutes to to do that, and I will be back soon.
Okay, how are we all doing? Do we need any more time? If you need more time, tell me in chat. Oh, I'm going to go through the answers. Okay, Simon, not a problem. I will give you a bit more time. Whoa, big statement by Gracie's World. I think we got them all. Whoa. Here we go then, here we go. 10 points up for grabs. You know, number 10 is hard. <laughs> yeah, watching this on 240, uh, they're just going to be blurs, aren't they? Like, oh, yeah, that would be... Oof. I was thinking, I was sort of hoping people weren't watching this on a little tiny uh, mobile device. Um, but yeah, if you're watching on 240p and on a mobile device... That's going to be quite difficult. Okay, I'm going to give you to 5-2, and then we will carry on. So you have about two minutes, one minute. Okay, so, as Simon is now ready, I'm going to assume nobody else needed any more time. So, here are the answers. So, Bridge 1 is H, the Golden Gate Bridge. Bridge 2 is Tower Bridge. Bridge 3 is the Rialto Bridge in Venice. Bridge four is the Charles Bridge. Bridge five is the fourth bridge. Bridge six is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Bridge seven is the Pont du Gard in France. Bridge eight is the Iron Bridge. Bridge nine is the Brooklyn Bridge. And the hardest one, number 10, is Jeff Bridges. So, throw your scores up in chat. Gracie's World, false 10 points. Here we go, 10 points for Gracie's World. Well done, Miss Quinn, Ellie and Ruth, 8 out of 10, Adrian Melly, whoop whoop, 10 out of 10, excellent, 10, 8, good scores people, next time I won't give you the answers and then see, let's uh, see how you do, Simon, 10, congratulations, There's some nice high scores in this round. Obviously, Jeff Bridges wasn't difficult enough. 
So, oh, to eight out of 10, very good, but not quite all of them. Right, so we are going to take a short break. I'll be back in about five minutes. Um, get your refreshments in and uh, get your brains back in gear and we will be back.
Okay, welcome back. And on with the show. The next round is called Planet Nerd. So if you know some nerdy stuff, you may be able to answer a few of these questions. Oh, excuse me. Um, it would seem that emus can't fly, so everybody gets an extra point. My family downstairs are very, very, very not happy with the fact we got that wrong. they got that wrong. So everybody, you get an extra point. But like I said, don't don't blame me. Blame the internet. I fact check absolutely zero, <laughs> which I probably should do. So if everyone's back, we will go carry on with the show. Um, so planet nerd question one. The TV series Firefly combines sci-fi and what other genre? Is it A, espionage, B, western, or C, fantasy? Question two. Who was credited for coining the term nerd? Was it A, George Lucas, B, Dr. Zeus, or C, Philip K. Dick? Question three. Which country has a TV program about a nerd soccer team? Is it A, the Netherlands, B, Germany, or C, Belgium? So let's go through them again. Question one, the TV series Firefly combines sci-fi and what other genre? Is it A, espionage, B, westerns, C, fantasy? Question two, who was credited for coining the term nerd? Was it A, George Lucas, B, Dr. Zeus, or C, Philip K. Dick? And three, which country has a TV program about a nerd soccer team? Is it A, the Netherlands, B, Germany, or C, Belgium? Sorry, Belgium seems to be stuck behind my head, but C is Belgium. Question four. Is the theoretical Higgs boson particle bigger or smaller than a proton? Is it A, bigger, B, smaller, or C, the same? I'm not sure that's a nerd question, but we'll go with it. Question five. Go for secure T and supply R are robots from which 2008 film. And question six. What is the password on Fox Mulder's PC at home? Fox Mulder is one of the characters in the X-Files. Is it A, Alien 5, or AL1EN5? Is it B, Trust No One? Is it C, Samantha? with a 4 on the end, instead of an A, which also seems to be hiding behind me. Make myself even smaller. So insignificant. Okay, so question 4. Is the theoretical Higgs boson particle bigger or smaller than a proton? A, bigger. B, smaller. C, the same. Question 5. Go for Secure T and Supply R are robots from which 2008 film? And question six, what is the password on Fox Mulder's PC at home? Is it A, aliens, B, trust no one, C, Samantha? Question seven. Translate the Klingon. I won't try and say it. Bortus, Blur, Jubbledur, uh, somebody more nerdy will be able to do it much better but is it a your ship is a garbage scow b revenge is a dish best served cold or c do you serve blood soup and question eight what movie made a cameo in the 1958 movie the blob was it a psycho b the wizard of oz or c seven samurai so question seven Translate the Klingon. 
Hopefully you can all read that on the screen. If you've got perfect Klingon, you're going to know. Is it A, your ship is a garbage scow? B, revenge is a dish best served cold? Or C, do you serve blood soup? And eight, what movie made a cameo in the 1958 movie The Blob? Is it A, Psycho? B, The Wizard of Oz? Or C, Seven Samurai? Okay. Let's go through the answers. So, the answer to question one. The TV series Firefly combined sci-fi and westerns. If you haven't watched it, watch it. It's great. Question two. Who was credited for the coining the term nerd? It was B, Dr. Zeus. Looks like I've got textbooks in there somehow. Oh well, okay. Um, and three, which country had a TV program about a nerd soccer team? It was A, the Netherlands. So, one, the answer is B. Two, the answer is B. And three, the answer is A. Westerns, Dr. Zeus, and the Netherlands. Okay. Question four, is the theoretical Higgs boson particle bigger or smaller than a proton? It is smaller. So the answer is B. Five, go for security and supply are our robots from Wally. -E. And six, what is the password on Fox Mulder's PC at home? It is B, trust no one. So, on to question seven. Translate the Klingon. And the answer is B. Revenge is a dish best served cold. And eight. What movie made a cameo in the 1958 movie The Blob? It was The Wizard of Oz. So... <laughs> There's lots of uh, laughing and cheering and oh knowing downstairs. Throw your scores into the chat. Let's see how you did on the nerd round. Four out of eight, four out of eight, good. Ellie and Ruth, we got two. Oh dear, okay. Well, not too bad. Two's better than a zero and one. Two, five, very good. Paul, five, very good. Sheila and Andy, five, good. I'll assume all you nerdy types got the, uh, the thing on. And can say it fluently, uh, but, not, but not me, I'm afraid. So, round five. Round five is the food round. So, let's see what we have. Question one. Lady finger is a variety of which fruit? Ladyfinger is a variety of which fruit? Question one. Question two. Where does the story about carrots helping people to see in the dark come from? Question three. What unlikely medical use has been found for coconut water? What unlikely medical use has been found for coconut water? And question four. How many cups of tea are drunk in the UK on average every day? If you get within 10 million, I will give you the and I will give you the point. 
So, question one, Ladyfingers, a variety of which fruit? Question two, where does the story about carrots helping people to see in the dark come from? Question three, what unlikely medical use has been found for coconut water? And four, how many cups of tea are drunk in the UK on an average every day? Okay. Question five. They came in search of paradise. Name the chocolate bar. Question six. Which food was used as money by early North American settlers? Question six. Which food was used as money by early North American settlers? And question seven. What were the first tea bags made from? What were the first tea bags made from? Eight. Which biscuit brand did Bill Oddy appear in an, the advert for? Gotta admit, I didn't know this, but it's a brilliant question, so it's in. Question five, they came in search of paradise, name the chocolate bar. Six, which food was used as money by early North American settlers? Seven, what were the first tea bags made from? Eight, which biscuit brand did Bill Oddy appear in the advert for? Okay, so let's go through the answers. Ladyfinger is a variety of which fruit? It is a banana. Two, where does the story about carrots helping people to see in the dark come from? It comes from the RAF in World War II. Question three, what unlikely medical use has been found for coconut water? It's uh, been used as a substitute for blood plasma in emergencies. Question four, how many cups of tea are drunk in the UK on average every day? It is 165 million cups. So if you've got anywhere between 155 and 175 million, you get the point. And congratulations. Question five. They came in search of paradise. Name the chocolate bar. It is obviously Bounty. Question six, which food was used as money by early North American settlers? The answer to that is corn. Question seven, what were the first tea bags made from? They were made from silk. And question eight, which biscuit brand did Bill Oddy appear in the advert for? He appeared in the advert for Bandit. So, how did you do in the food round? Looking back at it, this seems like quite a difficult round. But let's see what the scores are. Two out of eight. Yeah, two. <laughs> what is a bandit? Oh, so many answers to that question. Four, well done. Four's a good score, I'm thinking. Two, three out of eight. Well, we'll have a break after round six. Um, so you can go and get yourself a cup of tea and a biscuit. Unless you don't have any tea or biscuits, then you, you won't be able to. Nothing like a nice cup of tea and a biscuit. So, some fairly low scores in there, but, uh, you know, I did give you a free one with bridges. So, let's move on to round six before we have another break. Guess the logo. So, basically, a picture 
of a logo for a business or whatever and tell me what it is Number one is that logo. What is that the logo of? Question two is that. What is that the logo of? I'll give you a few seconds to uh, Take a stare blankly at them. Google. Uh, no, don't Google. No cheating. Um, and then we'll move on to the next ones. Uh, no idea. Don't know what the loading screen of Minecraft music is. It could very well be. It's quite mellow for a computer game. Okay. We will move on to three and four. Number three. And number four. Number four is a logo lots of people see almost on a daily basis, I would think. We have Oh, no. I'm not going to give any clues. We'll do that. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay. A few seconds to get you scribbling down. Argue profusely about what's what. The Metal Mickey Company, number four. Okay. Questions five and six. Five. And six. few more seconds and we'll move on to the last two. Okay. Question seven and eight. Number seven. A knight on a horse. And number eight, um, a word that's missing some letters. <laughs> so, anybody need any more time? Well, have you all got eight out of eight? It's nice and simple. Anybody want to go back and look at one of the other pictures? I could probably do that. A few more seconds and then we'll go through the answers. Okay, let's go back to the first two. Number one is 
The answer is Spotify. The app on your phone that allows you to listen to just about any music you can think of. And number two is the website Wikipedia. The font of all knowledge where I could have found out that emus can't fly, but I didn't. And question three and four. The answer to number three is the perfume company, Chanel or fashion company. And number four is Android. So if you've ever rebooted your phone or updated your phone system and you have an Android phone, not a rubbish Apple phone, oh, controversial, then you'd have probably seen this little fella pop up on your screen as it's updating. The answers to five and six. Five is the car company Mazda. And the answer number six is the sports wear manufacturer Umbro. The answers to seven and eight. The answer to number seven is the fashion company Burberry. And the answer to eight is the iced tea making company Lipton. I'm sure they make other beverages as well. So put your scores in the chat and let's see how you did just before we take another small break so people can get tea and biscuits. Well done, Ruth and Ellie. Well done, Paul. Well done, Simon. Full Max. Well done, Sheila and Andy. Six out of eight. Still good, Adrian. Well done. I'll have to make them um, harder next time. But yep, all very good. Five out of eight. Still pretty good, Gracie's World. So we will take another small break just before the last two rounds and uh, be back with you in a few minutes.
Okay. I'm back. And just like to reiterate that all donations to Board in the City are fully welcome. Um, obviously, in these times, the cafe is not making a lot of money um, because we're generally closed. Um, so it all helps to hopefully keep the board game cafe running in the future. Um, so thank you to everybody that does uh, send us a donation. Right, on to round seven, the mastermind round. This is a general knowledge round, but these are all questions that have been on the show mastermind. So, without further ado, question one. The flag of which Southeast Asian country is a red is red with a five pointed yellow star in the center. Question two. Winning by a canvas is sometimes used to describe a close victory in which sport? And question three. The fictional character Oswald Cobblepot is better known by what name? So question one. The flag of which southeastern Asian country is red with a five pointed yellow star in the center? Question two, winning by a canvas is sometimes used to describe a close victory in which sport? And question three, the fictional character Oswald Cobblepot is better known by what name? Okay. Question four. Which county is known as the land of the prince bishops which county is known as the land of the prince bishops question five in norse mythology what is the name of the dwelling place of the gods in norse mythology what is the name of the dwelling place of the gods and question six, what term is used for a fruit with a thin skin, fleshy interior, and a hard, stony inner layer? Question six, what term is used for a fruit with a thin skin, fleshy interior, and a hard, stony inner layer? Question four, which county is known as the land of the Prince Bishops? Five, in Norse mythology, what is the name of the dwelling place of the gods? Six, what term is used for a fruit with a thin skin, fleshy interior, and a hard stony inner layer? Okay, on to the last two questions in this round. Question seven. The fingerprints of humans have many characteristics shared with which marsupial? Question seven. The fingerprints of humans have many characteristics shared with which marsupial? And question eight. Which poisonous plant, often connected with magical rituals, was in the Middle Ages thought to utter a shriek when pulled from the ground? Question seven. The fingerprints of humans have many characteristics shared with which marsupial? And question eight, which poisonous plant, often connected with magical rituals, was in the Middle Ages thought to utter a shriek when pulled from the ground? Okay. So that is your mind mastered. Let's go back and have a look. Answers. So, the answer to question one, the flag of which Southeast Asian country is red with a five-pointed yellow star in the center, it is Vietnam. 
Question two, winning by a canvas is sometimes used to describe a close victory in which sport? That sport is rowing. Three, the fictional character Oswald Cobblepot is better known by what name? I can't remember putting that in. He's called the Penguin. Had a faint moment there where I thought an answer wouldn't pop in. But it did, so that's all good. So, moving on to the next three. Which county is known as the Land of the Prince Bishops? It's the county of my birth, Durham. Question five. In Norse mythology, what is the name of the dwelling place of the gods? It is Asgard. And six. What term is used for a fruit with a thin skin, fleshy interior, and a hard stony inner layer? It is called a droop. Okay, so seven and eight. The fingerprints of humans have many characteristics shared with which marsupial? That would be a koala bear. And which poisonous plant often connected with magical rituals? Was in the Middle Ages thought to utter a shriek when pulled from the ground. It is obviously a mandrake. If you've ever watched Harry Potter, you will know it's a mandrake. So, throw your scores into the chat. Who has done well at the Mastermind? 5 out of 8, very well done. Any more, any more? Simon, 6 out of 8, very well done. Sheila and Andy, 3, okay, not bad. Adrian, 3's good, 3's okay. Gracie's World, 4 out of 8. Okay, so we will roll on to the last round. Which is the Missing Vowels round. There's only, there's eight questions, but there's only two different sections to these. Of course it's a mandrake, Charlotte. Of course it's a mandrake. So. Section one of the missing vowels round. Who are the wizards? Fill in the vowels. Find the wizard's name. Simple as that. Give you a few seconds, minutes, and then we will move on to the second section.
Okay, are we ready to move on? Anybody want a little bit more time? Throw it in chat. And we can give you an extra 30 seconds to contemplate who these people are. If not, we will move on to the second section of Missing Vowels. Okay. We will give Gracie's World's team more time. As they said, please. Okay, so time is up. We are now going to move on to the next section, which is going to be British sitcoms. Again, I'll give you a couple of minutes and then we'll fire the answers out. Looking back at these, these look a little bit too easy for my liking. I'm going to definitely do this one again and uh, make them much harder. I'm now thinking I may have got one of these answers wrong. Not wrong that it's not the right thing, just I've spelt it wrong. But it doesn't matter. Okay, anybody need any more time? With the British sitcoms, are we all finished? Like I said, these are quite easy. So, right, we are going to look at the answers for the first section. So, who were the wizards? Question one, Brunkwund is Rincewind from the Terry Pratchett Discworld books. Answer to number two is obviously Albus Dumbledore from Harry Potter. Number three is Saruman from The Lord of the Rings. And the last one is Harry Dresden from a series of books where he stars as the main protagonist.
Okay, so on to the British sitcoms. Just Good Friends is Just Good Friends. Sumatra Savidmum is Some Mothers Do Have Them. Have them. Shouldn't be them, it should be um. No TH in there, because obviously they're not vowels. And number seven, Thutlumblun, is the thin blue line. And the last one, which I thought was genius, is hello, hello. Paul Binstead got eight, six times. Wow. That's a lot of points. Would seem downstairs they didn't get LOLO. It was a big sigh when that came up. So, chuck your scores in the chat. Did you get them all? Gracie's Will got three. Three. Uh, some, yes. Okay. We'll have to have a good talk when I get downstairs. Adrian, six. Simon, eight. Grin, six. Good. Oh, they got four. Oh, Gracie's Will went from three to four. Let's <laughs> win by luck. Well done to Sheila and Andy. Seven. Paul got eight again. So they've scored loads of points on this round. Um, so throw your totals up in the chat if you've got them. Let's see how you did overall. I don't think I counted. Was there any extra points? So eight rounds, eight questions. That's 64, was it? 45 is... And Paul's got another eight and another eight. Oh my goodness, they're, they're racking up. So, well done, Tim. 45 is a very good score. 38, very good. Any other teams want to throw their scores in the chat? As always, thank you very much for joining me. Um, it's been a pleasure. We will be back in two weeks um, to do this once again. And um, like I said, if you can, however small a donation, um, it's uh, something the cafe um, and the directors and the staff and everybody would be um, most appreciative. Um, more scores coming in. And in Sheila, 46. Very well done. 33, 34... Good scores, you know, over half points, just. So, Paul, well done, 47. All those eights, I thought it would be much higher than that. As for whether the board game cafe is going to be reopening, as Adrian just added, asked in chat, there's no plans at this moment. Um, the directors will be getting together uh, very soon and uh, discussing... Uh, ways we can maybe reopen uh, but at the moment no we don't have any other uh, plans as I speak um, so once again thank you very much thanks for playing and um, I'll see you in two weeks time